Hello, and welcome to Raw Impressions. It's been a while. <laughs> On this episode, Adele talks about some problem wildlife, and Lou continues his journey to inner peace. Thank you for listening. <laughs> we're back. Oh my gosh, we're back. Look at this. I'm in the, I'm in the room. I'm in the room we're... instead of in a, a white Pacifica minivan sitting next to John Davis. Oh. You're in the home. You're home. In the bosom. Hmm. Welcome back for the week. In the lair. I really, really missed Raw Impressions. I felt I felt the emptiness. I was like, oh, Raw, I miss you. It's so good to be back. I'm kind of glad I had a week off. Are you? Yeah, because I wanted well, to... Well, you were like juggling a lot. So. I was juggling a lot, but I wanted to come back into it. I wanted to do... A real textured episode yeah, for everybody. And that takes a lot of work, actually. It really does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lou busted his ears yesterday. I think you must have honestly spent eight hours like just crafting this episode. Oh, man. Working on all the the goodies. I forgot really basic stuff like, you know, don't have the headphones turned up all the way. Don't do that. When you press something, when you... I just... I deafened myself with scree- screeching feedback. Oh, I did all the dumb things geez. that I'd, I'd kind of actually got good at not hurting myself that way. Yeah. But two weeks off. Wow. You had to relearn it all again. And boy is like, I'm like, huh. I'm like, I'm working the four track when I was 23 stoned out of my mind kind of thing. Goodness. Just doing really hurtful, hurtful things to my precious, precious ears. Yeah. Wow. But okay. that's, that's, you know what? I oh, get Hold on. I have to take this call. I give. Keep recording. Oh, okay. What is it? Hello? Hello? Hi, this is Adele. This is Adele. Hi, this is Meg from the Greenfield Health Department. Hi, how are you? Oh, my God. I'm calling to let you know that the bat is negative. The bat is negative. Yay! Thank you so much. (laughs) That's wonderful news. Oh. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Wow. Could that be any more perfect? The timing uh, is so wild. I don't know if... I if, can't... I cannot make that up. Holy uh, shit. If people in, <laughs> remember the introduction of this episode, it, it talks a My little bit about... Crazy. It, it, it talks... Adele's going to talk... That's ab- wild that that just happened. Yes, Adele had a run-in with some problem wildlife. <laughs> she was also saved by problem wildlife. Oh, my God. Wow. Good news. Wonderful news. Should I, should we backtrack? <laughs> you don't have rabies. I don't have rabies. Yay. Yay bees. No rabies. <laughs> Phew. I was actually thinking, okay, today's Wednesday. They said one to two days I should hear. And I'm like, uh oh, does that mean I'm going to have to wander over to the emergency room soon and get my rabies shot? Last Is it minute be? rabies shot. Yeah, they were kind of leading me up. They said, well, 10 days. If yeah. you have rabies for 10 days, you're gone. You're dead. You're gone. Then you become mad and frothing at the mouth and your brain is eaten. <sighs> eaten. Rabies is bad news. Why have we not figured out rabies? We did like, figure out rabies. There's a shot. Yeah, but you have to like, I mean. The distinctive sound of the <laughs> mini cowbell indicates it's time for another Unsponsored local ad. Also good timing. Courtesy oh of God. Raw Impressions. <laughs> yeah. Hi, are you Rocky? Yes, ma'am. I think I'm staring at a bat. Don't move. Keep your eyes on the bat. I'll be there shortly. What's in your house? Rocky knows. You don't want to know. Rabies. Wildlife can be a problem. Problem wildlife is the solution. For mice, raccoons, 
the common scrotum rat. Possums. That's the common scrotum rat. Toilet weasels. Crib mice. Pillow snakes. The North American warm-blooded centipede. Rocky knows where they hide. Be not kids. Solve and or live with the problem humanely. We can be friends. Problem wildlife. Rocky knows. You can try to forget. Welcome to the maternity ward. Problem wildlife proudly serves all of Western Massachusetts. Go to problemwildliferemoval.com. Rocky? Yes, ma'am. I think I'm staring at an eagle. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> There's few things that I can do in my life. Few things. I mean, as far as like, you know, working on my spiritual life. Journey. Mm-hmm. Few things equal <laughs> the satisfaction that I get out of making a stupid commercial. Uh, uh, that was, I mean, you've made so many good commercials. That one is now currently number one. Number one. Do I like isolate that and text it to Rocky and um, just be like, Can I point out what I'm, I'm. This is for you. Can I, can I point out what I'm Thank most, you. my most proud of? Yes. Is, <laughs> is making up, uh, um, making up types of, of. Uh, Wildlife. Wildlife problem. Wildlife. Yeah. <laughs> let me just let me just in case anybody missed it. Uh huh. In case you missed it. Oh, I don't know if I missed it, but okay, go ahead. Um, uh, toilet we. <laughs> <laughs> toilet weasels. Uh huh. My work for this something commer- was a scrotum. Uh, <laughs> the North American scrotum rat. <laughs> and they're crib mice. Ew. <laughs> That's that would be bad. <laughs> Crib mice. No, thank you. And on the goofy side was the North American warm-blooded centipede, <laughs> which would be terrifying. That's where my mind. That's that's my nightmare. How many edibles are you on right now? It doesn't matter how how many I'm on right now. It's how many I was on yesterday. How many were you on yesterday? Um, or was it? There was a succession. I okay. didn't like take. I didn't take a bunch at once. I would take was one. Was it an edible day or a? It was an edible day. I okay. didn't. I know. I didn't. Didn't smoke. Smoking's bad for your lungs. Yeah. But you know, I've been like, I've been working so hard. <laughs> you know, on that tour, I didn't. There was no edibles on the the Fog Implosion tour. No. For Lou. No. Yeah. There was no. I was. The shows uh, were your edibles. Just. They were. Yeah. Those shows really turned my head inside. <laughs> 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 turned my pra- my past, my present, uh, and my future inside out. It was. It was really, really revelatory and inspiring. But um, yes, but you. So had yes, it. why did we do that? Why did that ad happen? Right. Yeah. Come on. Why did I get that phone call just now? That's my gosh. So fucking crazy. That was. Literally wild. So, man, um, that was wildlife right there. Wildlife. This wildlife. I, uh, last Thursday, last Thursday, you're staring at me. I don't know if it was last oh, Thursday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. For, All I can see I, are your eyes like peeping over no, my laptop. I played 13 shows in a row. I had no you're idea. Like, what I don't know day where I am what. or who I, I am. I did not. I just. Okay. So basically, last week, y'all, I. I like to wake up early in the morning to have like some quiet time, maybe write my journal, you know, a little me time before Izzy gets up for camp and just sort of start my day, maybe write my thanks, you know, hit that gratitude. So mm, hit it, hit it. Yeah, I I woke up, came downstairs and <laughs> So we have like a kind of like a living room, open dining room situation where you can see from one room openly into the other. See from one end of the house to the other. Just one end of the house to the other. And we have, I have what are called these things, arrow garden. It's basically like a, is that like a hydroponic kind of garden thing? It's a little mini hydroponic. Yeah. I grow basil inside and I'm right now I'm growing some wildflowers. So 
basically they they're lit up during the early morning hours and mm -hmm. i could kind of see that something out of the corner of my eye was illuminated by the arrow garden of the white curtain that's behind it on the window there seemed to be a brown lump mm -hmm. on the top of the curtain rod and i'm like huh that looks like there's something on that curtain but i my eyesight's not that good and i had my glasses on i'm like well hmm, weird so i go into the living room i sit down on the couch i'm getting ready to situate myself i turn on a lamp and i realize i'm just staring at this like brown lump across the the hallway you know across the room there on the curtain rod and i'm like oh fuck what is that there's something on the curtain rod and i immediately something kind of big something kind of big and i Great. immediately felt the dread i was like oh no lose on tour here i am it's the early morning there's something here in the home with me wildlife so, there was wildlife guys so basically i skirted past it really quickly into the kitchen <laughs> grabbed myself a cup of coffee i was almost like wanting to pretend that it would go away if i got the cup of coffee and i went and sat back down and i thought i'll just go get that coffee so i really can't handle anything without a cup of coffee so i got my coffee <laughs> <laughs> and then i thought well my eyesight's really crappy I, I was trying desperately to make it be like something that wasn't going to be alive. Like maybe some re really crazy like dust ball is formed overnight on the curtain rod. So I'm like, I'm going to get a flashlight and flash it on this thing and see what it is. And so I do. <laughs> I get a flashlight. I realize I go through about three flashlights. None of our flashlights are either working or they all need batteries. That. that is one of the most frustrating things ever as you're looking for a flashlight yes. that works in this house. And then, you know, occasionally I do put the batteries in a bunch of them and I'm like, okay, I'm setting this We're thing right. We're all good. Yeah. But then they all, I, then I don't know. Man. Then it's like three years later and we don't, we need True. a flashlight. Like once every three years, something shows up and next thing you know, we need that flashlight and so i was like sitting there trying to desperately trying to flash on this brown lump on the curtain rod and i thought this sounds really silly but i feel like i'm not that good with with problem wildlife i don't really know what to do and it happens i actually had the thought maybe that's a huge toad i don't know why but i just thought like maybe a toad is in the house or a huge ass frog and it crawled up there oh, and yes. it's like hanging from the curtain rod house toads a house toad <laughs> I know it makes be no cool. sense, but I would, I would be cool with house toads. I think it I seemed less scary than a bat. So I sure. was like, it's a toad. But then I finally kind of like flickered the flashlight, the little dim light that was there. And I think I caught the two round eyes looking, you know, and then I realized they that, don't look, they're blind. Well, they're blinded, they're, blind as bats. They are. Okay. Well, basically I realized then that what the brown lump was, which was about like the size of my whole hand. It was pretty damn big. It was a bat. So I kind of like back up into the living room, go sit down on the couch, and I'm just staring at the bat, and I'm going, fuck, what do I do? What do I do? And so I immediately start texting um, my mom friends who I know are up because they have a daughter who wakes up super early. So I'm like, you guys, I think I'm staring at a bat. Like, I'm not really sure what to do. And immediately... My friend Casey's like, you got to have Rocky. You got to call Rocky. Casey knows. Casey knows. She knows everything. So, you know, it was like, okay, Casey, she immediately hooked me up with uh, Rocky's phone number. She says, you just, you got to call Rocky. And I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking, God, it's like 630 in the morning. Do I call Rocky now? And she's like, you call Rocky right now. <laughs> and then I also thought I should really um, just maybe let Abby Barlow know, Lou's sister, Abby, who lives in Greenfield. I thought, I, I don't know. I just feel like I need to have it's some a, family backup it's a here. It's fucking emergency. It's an emergency. This I, is like I, I had a, a bout, I'm having a bout with super ventri ventricular tachycardia. Yeah. You, you call in, you call in. Call the family. Thank you. So, you know. Emergency. Exactly. So I text Abby that I think, I said, I think I'm staring at a bat. Text that to Abby. And then I call Rocky leave a message uh then he calls me back really soon after and in the meantime i don't know what to do so i'm just like sitting there drinking coffee staring at the bat hoping to god it doesn't like wake up and start flying around rocky calls me back 
and uh, basically said what we said in the commercial. He was like, Rocky here. And I'm like, I think I'm staring at a bat. And he says, I'll be there shortly. Keep your eyes on it. Don't move. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, you can't fucking like walk away from a bat because if they leave and move around. I didn't really think that. We've had a bat in the house before, I'd like to point out. Yeah. Shortly after we moved here. Yes. Not only did I find a dead bat in the upstairs fireplace that is now Izzy's room. I yeah. found a dead bat there. Right. Well, maybe even down in your, your In my office. studio, maybe yeah. it was there. Anyway. Yeah. And then we actually did get a bat in the house, and I managed to get it out the window. You did. Oh. <laughs> oh, just, just real quick. Yeah. I was listening to the Eckhart Tolle um, audiobook on Spotify, because you get it for free if, you, yes. if, you, if you're a Spotify premium. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I listened to it. I, I actually tried to read the book years ago. And made a, the, made no sense to me whatsoever. Which book? The Power of Now. Oh. But I wanted to just play this little excerpt. Okay. From, I want to, this is an excerpt from the book. I just Got wanted it. you to hear it. Okay. <laughs> your mind is a petulant child. It demands your attention. It draws you to thoughts of the past and of the future. Both are not real. Neither your past nor future exist. They are constructs of your ego. Yeah, but the stuff that happened to me like shaped who I am and I'm trying to get my shit together for the future. I gotta think about that stuff. Your mind is a tool. (laughs) You can certainly use it in practical ways, like mathematical equations. But the future never arrives and your past is a load of shifting shit. A collection of biased memories your needy mind arranges to fit its concept of self, none of which exists. How come you keep saying that? I am myself. All the stuff I did and what I want is like who I am. It isn't. Listen carefully. You need to be present. You need to understand that this moment, the now, is all you will ever have. You can make the decision to live in the moment or be unconscious, which is insanity. Yeah, but yeah, but wait a minute. I am conscious. No, you're not. You're in the swirl of your needy narcissistic mind that <laughs> seeks to obscure all but your own bullshit, which is insane. Jeez, man, I get it. Okay, I suck. Fuck you. <laughs> I wow, really, that was an excerpt from the book, huh? <laughs> Just word for word. <laughs> I really like. amazing. I really liked how they had like they, they actually had these little counter arguments. He would like he goes through the whole thing, and then then you get these voices that come in, and there's the male voice, and then there's a the female voice, both of which are like, you know, like they're they're trying to understand. I really like it because yeah. it, it really puts you. With, I think when I first read the book, I don't either. I didn't notice that part of it or what, but I, having voices actually illustrate it for you, and also. Eckhart Tolle. I used to call him Eckhart Tolle. It's Oops. Eckhart Tolle. Okay. I, was I didn't like, know either. Toll. I mean, Tolle means, it means like great in German, like Tolle. And he's German. Ganz Tolle. You know, it just, just sure. means great. Everything's awesome. So yeah, it looked, looked like Toll to me. Yeah, me too. But it's Tolle. Tolle. As, as I found out because Noted. it was an audio book. Yes. And so anyway, yeah, yes. I just really wanted to share that with you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, you know what? I also have the power of now in my audiobooks, and I, I have not finished it, but maybe I'll, you know, I think you had to be in the right place, right? Yeah, I was. I am definitely in the right place to receive the power of now to pretty much tra- just f- fuck the past. Yeah, and let's not get too obsessed with the future. Fair enough. Yeah, right. Let's just have a good attitude right now, baby. Have a good attitude right now. Yes. And you know, I was able to come home. From, because in, in a way, there's a lot of things like he says all this stuff and they're like, well, I got to go to work. I, mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't just be staring at a tree all day. I got shit to do. Yeah. And he's like, no, I mean, just when you do something, bring your full attention to it. Be in the now when you're creating something, even though you're creating something for the future. That's fine. You know, if you've got your plan and you're right. working towards a goal, that's all cool. But just don't get but don't forget to enjoy the moment. Yeah. And when yeah. I got home from the tour and we were like, I'm like, whoa, we haven't done a you know, a podcast in a long time. And gee, I haven't really done a podcast where I really devoted a lot of time to just doing really stupid shit in it, you know, mm-hmm. like just making <laughs> up a bunch of garbage and having a real and just really entertaining myself. Yeah. Really seizing on the moment. So I have to say creating, um, you know, this has been I got home and I wasn't I was Eckhart. He got me there. 
He felt he helped get you in the now. He did. He, I actually, I, I fucking understood it. I read it decades ago and I was like, Ugh. yeah, now you were not ready for the now. No, then. Was, but you know what? Actually, I was enjoying, I had a real pretty great now, I would say for quite a while, like through my twenties, I was in the now, I would say mm. creating, mm-hmm. living, yeah, loving. Sure. I don't know. Wow. So anyway. No, that's great. I uh, you're inspiring me to um, revisit that audiobook. It's it's ready on demand. I own it, so whenever I want to dip I wanted, back uh, in, I wanted to play it with you, for you. Aww. I wanted to be like, hey, let's let's go to the grocery store and listen Aww. to Eckhart Tolle. I love it. I'd love to do that. And if you want to have a date where we do that, I'm I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. So yeah. Little interlude there. Oh my goodness. I'm well. So are you in the now? Um, right now as i'm about to tell you finish telling you about the bat you bring me to now oh you are now for me mm-hmm. yeah it's a real you know it's kind of cheating a little bit it's like you're a little you're a little now bunny <laughs> what <laughs> i'm a now bunny now bunny <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> That's my kind of wildlife. Oh my goodness. The nail well, bunny. That yeah. Okay. So basically, you know, what happened was is let's see, where was I? I re- I was realizing it was a bat. Rocky called me, told me to keep my eyes on the bat, which you know, it, it did make sense to me during the, when he told me because I thought immediately he's telling me that because he, it could it could move and then and then I have to go find the bat. And this this is just easier if we know where the bat is, keep our eye on the bat. So I said, okay, Rocky, I'll, I'll hang tight and I'll see you soon. Gave him my address. (laughs) So then Abby calls me like a second later and she's like, yeah, so I should probably come over. Right. And I'm like, actually, that would be great. That would be really helpful. Um, because well, a couple things. So one is I would have to be getting Izzy up for camp soon and, Someone would have to take her to camp, you know what I mean? And it would either be me, but I don't know what's happening with the bat. And Rocky then does like a whole diagnostic, I think, of your house, like up top to bottom, whatever. Um, and, And then also, I, well, you know, when you sleep at night, you go to sleep and it's like your own little thing. You've got your, your sleep clothes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I happen to be wearing a very lovely nightgown. Which one? It, it was like the very pale one from Vermont Country Store. Ooh, the pale Shout one. Shout out Vermont Country Store on uh, their nightgowns. Yeah. And, uh, but I was not wearing any, any underwear <laughs> underneath it. How come you don't do that when I'm home? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> What's happening? It was really hot. We were gone and girls need to breathe. You know, your parts need to, they need air. They just need to like be, you can't. I, well, why are you, why are you suffocating yourself when I'm home? Be free. I, okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I just, I was loosey goosey that night and I was like, I just want to. Be comfortable. Be very comfortable and just have this like light sheath on me and. Okay. I realized that it would be awkward to answer the door wearing such a look um, to receive Rocky. And he would maybe wonder why the hell I was basically naked. So so I was gr- glad that Abby showed up, thankfully, very she lives really close, uh, and she was able to position herself in a chair so that she could watch the bat while I went upstairs and changed. Well, surely you could have wrapped it. A blanket around yourself. There are several blankets in the living room. Oh, that's true. I guess I didn't think to put like a toga on myself. I don't know. I just was. Yeah, probably, I wasn't thinking clearly. I was actually very stressed. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm calm now. Yeah, bats are scary for people. The, yes. It's, I. I managed like over over the years. I was really I've, scared. I'm not gonna lie. I no, was I actually. I heard that bats don't. They don't really. They don't want to fuck with you. They don't want to fly into your hair. They, they really are just like, and they're. They hate I us. Actu- they're f- trying to get away from us. I actually find them a little cute. You and Izzy both. I so. think they're. I think they're gorgeous in their weird way, and they're such. A, they're such incredible creatures. I caught one with a full goldfish bowl in my parents' house when I was in my early twenties. <laughs> It was really cool. We really got to look at it and like, and then set it free. I have to say, so I had to then, so Rocky came, uh, Abby's there helping and 
Sure enough, yes, it wasn't a toad that had crawled up our curtain rod. It, it was indeed a bat. And then Rocky informed me that the, the safest practice, and it was my option, mm-hmm. but the safest practice would be for him to capture the live bat I don't think you can kill bats anyway. That's you illegal, can't. right? Oh, you can't you're get rid of them. To, you can't. You're not supposed to exterminate them. You're, I mean, to yeah. get them out of your house is a huge process. It's a huge be, process. Because it is a state law that it has to be humane. Right. Like, we have to protect the bats. You people protect are the bats. very into bats. People yeah. are, understand the value of bats. I mean, it's kind of cool that we got them hanging out up there. It's it's actually not, not terrible. That's they right. eat bugs up in our yes. attic, So, which I found out from Rocky. Um, but... Uh, so he basically said, you don't know where this bat has been, basically. You woke up this morning and it's all the way down here, you know, in mm-hmm. the first floor. And which would mean most likely it traveled to get there. Of course. During yes. the night. And since our bedroom doors were open during the night, you cannot guarantee that said bat did not. He could have rabies dusted you. Exactly. Just rained rabies it just, down on you. It's basically like he said that it can happen from a scratch, obviously a bite, or even just their saliva drip, which is wild. Ugh. Okay. So I. Now I'm afraid of bats again, by the way. This whole story is maybe. It's, it's, it was pretty intense. And I'm not going to lie. I was literally sweating i was sweating a lot i was very nervous about the bat i was like i was bummed so then i had to wake up izzy uh and during this whole thing when rocky got there and she got to meet rocky and she was like oh the bat's so cute i'm gonna name him tutu so she named the bat tutu rocky thought izzy was really cool he liked how she was asking him so much so many questions she was like well who are you what are you doing what's happening with that bat what else are you going to look for? And he was like, you're not my daddy. Yeah. Who's this guy in here in the morning <laughs> with a glove on? Um, yeah. So, you know, then Rocky just like pulled up a chair, snatched the bat with his gloved hand, obviously in a tender enough way to keep it alive. And I watched him like knife a Tupperware to get some air holes in it. And he put the bat in a it's like a Lunchables Tupperware container, asked me for some masking tape. We just kind of taped it down. Um, that bat was really bummed. It was and making crazy sounds. It went ballistic. Okay. It was like fucking. <laughs> it was like crazy. And I was like, holy shit, holy shit. That scared me. It was really scary. And he said, you're going to have to take this bat to the Department of Health here you. in Greenfield. Yeah, me. That's my job. Not him. <sighs> no. I had to deliver a live bat then, and, and we put it inside of a brown paper bag. I love to, the staple, staple paper that I, bags. That I, to, I was allowed Sitting to put on one the, staple on it. The passenger side. And the bag just like bouncing just like around driving. because the bat was losing its mind. You're rolling with a bat. Oh my God, I was so nervous, you guys. I had all the windows down just in case because he was like, bats can get out of just like the smallest little crack. And I, I could just, I was like, please just let me get this bat delivered to the Department of Health. Drop it off. Please don't let me have rabies. Dear God. Because then he also informed me that rabies are 100% lethal. After 10 days. Yeah, something like that. So I was like... Yeah, so you were actually on a countdown. You were on a death watch until <sighs> until the beginning of this episode. Truly. When, miraculously... You guys, that call... Ha- that's wild. Serendipitously, Problem wildlife. I mean, my you God. You received the call. Yes. The negative... I know. The While neg- we're doing this... Wow. And then I guess they let that little bat go. Uh, they must then, right? Yeah, here you Just go, buddy. Goodbye, goodbye, Tutu. We don't have to put you in the garbage disposal because if you got rabies... Oh, my God. Whew, you're dead. Oh, hey. So, I mean, they're yeah. Dying. They're dying anyway. Oh. That's the thing. If they have rabies, they're... You know, they don't live to have... I mean... Oh. Rabies kills it. They kills, kills, it. kills all. Kills the Rabies host. kills all. As far as I know. Okay. As far as... I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, wow. Maybe, maybe there is just I. I don't know. I don't think I'm wrong. Okay. I think the thing is, that so if like, the bat has rabies, it's on its it's on its way to death. Now remember when we found the when you found the bobcat in the backyard in Glendale, in Glendale, California. Right. Yes. See, the thing is, like around that same time, I was reading a lot of news reports of you know I was just looking for news reports on bobcats, and there was one like around that same time where a rabid bobcat yes because they go crazy yes they it got that rabid. woman in her head right they go rap they go crazy so that's what happens and if you get rabies you're going crazy 
Wait, is this the end? <laughs> this is the end. It's the well, perfect timing. I know the bat. I just finished my bat story. I know. And, and I and I'm negative, guys, are because the bat's negative. So I don't have rabies. The bat doesn't have rabies. And in case anybody missed it, I'd like to like you to know that I combined the Batman theme plus the Rocky theme. Yes, I love it. And this is the Batman side of it. And snuck a little Eckhart Tolle in there. I know. Wow, what can we do, guys? <laughs> Come on. Well, it's good to be back. I'm leaving so soon. So good to be back. Good to be back. I'll be gone <laughs> next week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 